this is home. My leg fell off. It's awkward, huh? <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to another awesome, finally cloudy episode. So today, as you can see, we have clouds and I wanted to come out here to do some time lapses. So I figured I'd take you along with me and go ahead and do my review of this guy right here, the Capsule 360. So my ops was kind enough to send me one to try out and I've been using it for a few weeks and uh, I think it's pretty awesome. But let's go ahead and get set up. Let me get situated and uh, get another time lapse going and then I'll talk you guys through how I'm setting this up and then go over my thoughts about it. So we'll see you in a second. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through how I'm setting this up. The first thing that I love about the capsule is the app. And also before we get into this, let me just state, I did already mention that Capsule gave me this, but they are not paying me. This is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. My thoughts are my own. And uh, everything that I say about this is from me. So let's continue on. So right off the bat, I'm gonna go in, make sure my Bluetooth is turned on, which it is. And then turn this guy on. So there it is, and you can put multiple ones of these together to make a, a dual axis or a tri axis pan tilt, all that good stuff. I don't, obviously, I only have the one. So I'm going to connect there. So here's the basic setup. This thing can do a lot, and I'm not going to go over every single thing about this because it does a lot, but I'm going to go over the features that I'm going to use right now, which is the basic time lapse. So we're going to start with that. And right off the bat, it lets you choose. So I keep it at 24 frames per second. And then in the basic time lapse, you don't need to put your exposure in because it's assuming that you're not doing a long exposure. So if you are gonna do a long exposure, make sure you put that in long exposure mode. That way it knows to deal with the interval if it's longer than a second. So the mode right here is shoot, move, shoot. That's what I want, I want it to shoot and then move and then stop and then shoot. So shoot, move, shoot's pretty self-explanatory. Interval, so the interval here, looking at these clouds and how they're moving, I think I'm gonna do a four second interval. And that's arbitrary, that's just kind of based on my knowledge of time-lapse and how I feel like I want it to flow. Obviously the, the lower the interval you have, the uh, faster or the slower the elapsed time is gonna be. So I want these clouds to look kind of smooth and I don't want the time lapse to take itself to take too long. So four seconds for an interval is pretty good there. And then play time, which is how long do you want the elapsed thing to be, the, the movie clip. It's not gonna be a movie clip, but that's how long it's gonna play out once it's all done, is I have it set at nine seconds. I'm pretty happy with that. So once you have those settings, then we can come in here and hit this little button here on the right, and then now we can do our start position. So what I like to do is I like to turn my screen on so that I can see. So now we have motion. So that's pretty cool, and it'll let you adjust your start position, I think. I want it right about there. So once we're happy with that, we can hit next, and then it'll go to your end position. All the way over there. So that's a pretty far end position. So before we go any further, uh, let me go ahead and I'll hit next here. So device will set, so it captured those and now it's gonna reset to its position. And you can see that I did it, it'll tell you the degree that, that it went to. So 92 degrees on the circle there. So that's all set up. So before we go any further, let's talk about this thing. So this is a stepper motor, basically it's a single axis panning. So it's really important that you get this level if you don't wanna do extra keyframing in post because if your tripod isn't level and if the head's not level, then as you pan, part of it will be level and then it will end up not level. 
I personally don't care about that because I don't like to shoot straight on all the time. So what I like to do is, or how I combat that, is I shoot super wide. Like I shoot wider than I need because then I can go in there and then set this off frame. So that's what I'm gonna do actually. Um, I'm not gonna start this because if we look here, we can actually see the composition. The horizon line is right just right in the center. And I really don't like that for most of my time lapses. Uh, just, I'd rather have, a especially with this stuff, I'd rather have a little bit more sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this. All right, so I've done a little bit of crookedness here and I want a little more sky than ground. And it's definitely lopsided. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my start position and I'm happy with this as a start position. So I'm gonna to go to next. But now you'll see that when I rotate it, now it's getting lopsided the other direction. And now it's like dipping this like super bad. So I'm just gonna make one more quick adjustment like that. And I'm shooting at 16 millimeters, which is pretty wide. I actually might end up doing this with a 14, but I think we'll go with that. And then I'm gonna hit start. So now it's gonna take me back to my original position. And the cool thing is it doesn't start until you hit start. So you have time to make sure, see, see look how crooked that is. But I'm happy with that. All right. So the next thing you need to do is make sure your camera's all set up. So I'm gonna have this in aperture priority mode. So anyways, aperture priority mode for me, and I don't care what my shutter speed is right now. Normally if you're doing cinematic stuff with a time lapse, you'd want your shutter speed to be like half your interval length. So if I have four seconds, then I'd want a two second shutter, but I don't feel like getting my filters out and dealing with that right now. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna leave mine rather shallow at F5. And I'm doing that because my sensor is really dirty and I have a lot of sensor dust and I don't wanna clean that out of a time lapse. So that's set. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop it uh, to minus two thirds because of the clouds. So uh, exposure compensation minus two thirds. So all that's set up and then we can just go ahead and hit start. And then you'll see it tells you right here, remaining time, 15 minutes, frames, total frames, gonna be 216 frames. And then we're all good to go. Well, that was fun. We had to get out of there kind of quick because those storms changed. They started coming right towards us. So we had a couple miles to run back to the car. <laughs> uh, but I, I think the time lapse was a success. And there's a couple of things, uh, there's a couple of other things that I wanted to go over about this, um, my thoughts, reviews, that kind of thing. So I mentioned that uh, I think one of the best things about the Capsule 360 in my experience so far has been the app. And like I said, there's a lot of different stuff you can do on there. And I have, I use the long exposure time-lapse settings a lot. And I really like that because you can input your exposure length and then you can input the interval between which uh, the exposures go off. And all of that stuff is really handy to end up making a really smooth, high quality time-lapse. And I do it a lot for the Astro stuff. So for me, that's a big selling point. Um, I've also tried the star tracking mode with moderate success, limited to moderate success. But to be fair, I've only tried it once and I believe it was with this shot here. So in theory, when you uh, set this thing up in the star tracking mode and then you put the angle that it tells you to do and all that stuff. Maybe I'll make a separate tutorial on that because I don't want to get into that here because that's gonna, you guys know how I like to ramble. But star tracking mode, basically it will uh, rotate with the earth and track the stars to let you have a longer exposure 
which is uh, really nice for astrophotography to get those clean, noiseless images. And, you know, like I said, this one, it was okay, but it certainly could have been better uh, had I spend more time with it. And I probably will. And uh, if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, leave, leave a comment down below. And if I have enough interest, I'll definitely make a separate tutorial on just using this for both star tracking and for astro stuff. So some of the other features, um, you can't, unfortunately, I don't think you can get into the app unless you actually turn this thing on. So I just turned it on real quick and fortunately it connects really fast. So I really like how easy it is to connect. I haven't had any drops. Uh, I haven't had any loss of connection, even when after I've connected and turned the phone off or walked away, turned everything back on, out of range, whatever, uh, it still comes back on and shows me my elapsed time and everything that's going on. So I really like that. Some of this other stuff in here though, uh, bulb ramping, time lapse, that's really handy for holy grail type stuff, sunset, uh, sunrise. Interval ramping, time lapse, that's really handy. Uh, interval ramping time lapses are really handy for really long stuff. Uh, again, like holy grail, sunset stuff. So you want to, it's where you start out with a shorter exposure and you end up with a longer exposure. HDR time lapse, haven't messed with that at all. Uh, I've been perfectly happy with either throwing a filter on, a square filter, or um, just getting the most I can out of the dynamic range. But that's really cool that they have that there. It seems to me like it'd be a lot of, a lot of work, and I already do a lot of work. I haven't used the video settings. Uh, I haven't used the follow me settings, which is kind of interesting. Turntable, I have no idea what that is. Panorama, that's pretty self-explanatory. Remote controlled video. Again, I haven't messed with any of that. What I do also like about this is it's, it's a little bit bulky for this purpose, but if you find yourself without an intervalometer built in, so I have three cameras. I have my 1DX2, my Canon 5D Mark IV, and the Canon EOS RP, which is what I'm filming this video with right now. And the RP and the 5D4 both have built-in intervalometers. So if I go out uh, without this thing, and I just want to get a time lapse, I can do that. But the 1DX2 does not. And so if I forget my intervalometer, external one that I have for the 1DX2, then uh, I'm out of luck for doing a time lapse unless I just do 4K video and speed it up, which is not good. So if I have this, then, and even if I don't want a rotated, a, a motion controlled time lapse, then this is basically will function as my slightly bulky intervalometer, allowing me to get the basic time lapse, the long exposure, the bulb ramping, the interval, you know, the interval ramping. And uh, with cameras that don't have it, like my stupid 1DX2, uh, I I never know why Canon didn't integrate an intervalometer into that, but that's the way it is. So that's just an added bonus of having that. This is like I said, there are cheaper, lighter dedicated intervalometers that you can buy to plug in that I have but you know if you have this too it definitely works well for that so let's talk about a couple of quirks real quick so uh, it's not all roses and, and everything I have had a few issues and the main issue that I had is when I first got this thing uh, basically it just wouldn't work right and it just wasn't the timing wasn't right and this the firmware was just acting off and uh, I tried to, it, it said that it needed a firmware update and I figured, well, that will probably fix it. And I wrote the guys at MyOps and they were the support guys and they were pretty good with getting back to me and uh, telling me how to update it. Even though the instructions that they sent with it were sufficient enough, like I knew how to update it, it's not complicated. It just wasn't working. I just it would it would download the firmware and then it would start updating and then it would get to 50, 80 percent, whatever, and then it would just stop and it would say can't can't update. And it did that for weeks. And I, you know, I was at an impasse. I just I couldn't do anything with it. I had it for a couple of weeks and I would try it every couple of days. I would just try to uh, update it and see. I tried it on multiple devices to update, and it just wouldn't finish the update. Uh, and then just one day out of the blue, I tried it again and it just decided to completely update. And after that, everything was perfect. So 
hopefully if you do get one of these you don't have that update problem i don't know if it was something in the capsule that just was refusing to you know like be a stubborn child or something and just not cooperate uh, but it did and it works and uh, i haven't seen any other problems with that from other reviewers or anything like that so hopefully that shouldn't be an issue if you guys pick one up um, but if you do i guess just hit them up let them know about it they're pretty good with their responses and just keep trying it like i do like don't give up so last thing uh let's talk about the motor real quick it says i think that it can handle up to eight pounds or so uh which is awesome because i have a 1dx2 with a 24 to 70 which is kind of like a bigger setup that i would use or even uh i, I have also used 5d4 with a 20 with a 70 to 200 so both of those combinations are pretty heavy, comparatively speaking, and this handles them just fine. You'd be happy to know. Uh, on this tripod even, with this medium-sized ball head, I haven't had any issues with the motor, like with worrying about the motor frying out or with it not being able to rotate the 1D or the 5D with the 70 to 200. So I've been very happy about that. And then of course, if you put the R on there or even a phone, uh, this can do phone and you can tell it in the app that you're using a phone or whatever and uh, and that opens up a lot of possibilities for phone time lapses because you guys know that uh, I also shoot with my phone and I have done some pretty cool uh, at least I think time lapses with my phone so it's nice to know that I could just take this and my phone and a little tiny super tiny tripod and get away with uh, some super light long hiking and come out with some great time lapses. All right, that was really long. I know I talked a lot. It is definitely second breakfast time because I am starving. So I'm gonna wrap this up here. And if you guys have any questions about the Capsule 360 or anything that I covered with it or didn't cover with it, leave those in the comments below and you know I will definitely answer them. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I've got new videos every week. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.